have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Scholars of Wrestling. You like how I just added the little emphasis on scholars of wrestling? See, huh? huh? uh, yeah. fool. Uh, we, oui. we, oui, madame. We. Oui. No, no, I just need to powder my nose. <laughs> I am Tarek Gaylor. You always deliver with such gusto. Oh, thank you. I am Tarek Awar. Alongside me, as always, my two partners in crime, Jeff Smith. Uh, apparently for the, our master conductor today, we have Christmas in August. Who knew? And Brian Ringwood. I've only got one thing to say. What's that? That's racist. Is that, yeah, I was going to say, is that some sort of racial stab there at a specific wrestler? Yes, it is. Quite possibly. Oh! <laughs> and with that, let's just go right into peeking behind the curtain on some backstage news with, ironically enough, Alberto Del Rio getting released this past week with uh, just yesterday at just, the time of this recording. Oh, it's, on my birthday of all things! So, what a great birthday! What a memorable, bo- Happy what a birthday memorable to me, birthday except moment! Act, except they actually li- kind of liked Del Rio a little bit. Yeah, I, I, li- I, I liked him fine. As it was boring if they had kept him with the. Uh, but you, but but I never you already knew believing. that. But if they kept him with the, but you already knew that gimmick, then that was cool back then. That was cool, and that's why I took such pride in delivering the news that he was going to win the 2011 Royal Rumble. Now, he's just filler. He was filler. He did good matches. You never had a problem with his matches. His personality was boring as hell. So he yeah. had no personality. So yes, that yeah. because that after was that why he fir- was boring as After well. that first title run, when they took away the "but you already knew that" character, he did, uh, there was nothing else to it the at only, all. <laughs> the only thing memorable that came out of Alberto Del Rio is that he ran over Foley Claws. <laughs> that was fun. And even that then, fun. I only remember that because they showed it. Did they show it on the network or the dot com? I know someone linked to it online. I totally they just wouldn't stop talking that. about it that week. Oh boy! <laughs> as if it was some kind of heinous crime to run over a guy dressed up as Santa Claus. I'm you want to know? A oh, police. You want to talk about <laughs> heinous crimes? Let's talk about where we stand as far as the reasons why Del Rio got. I was about to say Del Rio got eliminated. Oh, he well, he did. Well, technically, yeah, technically, yeah, technically he, did. he did. They cut him off at the pass. <laughs> Why the Rio got released? Uh, right now, again, as of right at the time of this recording, I believe the situation is still ongoing for unprofessional conduct. But uh, from what I'm hearing, or from what I heard, the reasoning why the Rio got released is apparently someone at in catering. Someone tried to get someone to wash a dish. The person replied, I don't wash dishes. That's Del Rio's job. Oh, oh boy. Er. Del, Del Rio caught wind of this. And supposedly, he stood up to the guy. The guy was just like, <laughs> and then Del Rio was just like, Slap. smack in the face. So, Slap so for basic, one damage. So basically, he, <laughs> stood up for for himself. Damage. he stood up for himself after a racist comment. Yes, and that 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 cost you your job. Yes, that that's a little screwed up. If that's the case, and shouldn't the catering guy also lose his job? It he should, but there's more to the story. Ah, the plot thickens. <laughs> Apparently, on Twitter at the time of this recording today, there were a couple of posts on the official WWE Twitter. It was actually a two-parter that said something like. Del, Alberto Del Rio's the reasoning for Alberto Del Rio's reasoning is strictly on Alberto Del Rio. He's the only one to blame. If you're going to be mad at anybody, but be mad at Del Rio. He's a professional. He should not. There's no reason for that kind of unprofessional conduct. And that's all that the WWE said on the matter on Twitter. That and again, this is just my added evidence. The fact that they did not actually use his real name on the releasing page on the do, on the dot com earlier leads me leaves me and some other people to believe that this could possibly be a work 
See, here's the problem with that statement, okay? They didn't use the real... For some, they didn't re use the real names for some of the releases. In right, the lab. That's, that's just me. I'm still... Yeah, I'm not going for that. that. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere near to work. Okay. Well, you're <laughs> the man in that. Just the way that was handled by yeah. the whoever runs the WWE Twitter. You're thinking that People, this is a Daniel Bryan thing from back in... Uh, Back in a nexus. I'm saying it's possible, and just the way it's presented, this could conceivably be either a work in progress in the internet age, or could this just be someone in WWE on, on their Twitter page just going off the rails? Because the one thing that has been confirmed is that who the person who w, uh, WWE who Del Rio assaulted or slapped in the face, whatever it's still assault. Yeah, Whatever it is, or whoever it was, th that person was said to have worked in WWE social media. It's probably the person who we slapped. You never know. It's possible. Well, all that matters is it's been clear that Del Rio, for the past year, I believe, he's been unhappy being in the company anyway with basically not doing anything, as we were called, being filler for main event stars. Honest, it could be the best time for him to go because they weren't doing anything with him. He was just, like what we were saying, filling time, filling, having opponents for main event guys just so they can beat him. Yeah, yeah. But my I'd, my feeling is if they were gonna if if they released him, okay, I didn't look into it right away, and the first thing I saw was the WWE releases Alberto Del Rio, and I was like, why? Not looking further into it, just seeing the headline, WWE releases Alberto Del Rio. I'm like, there are so many other people that you could get rid of first. Why are you getting rid of this guy? If it was for budget cuts, like the other, like the rest of the releases from the last month or so, then I, that would be like, why are you releasing him for what reason? He still puts on good matches, whether it's filler or not. And but now that the now that I've looked into the story, and unpro unprofessional conduct, whether he was sticking up for himself or not due to racist comments or whatever. Yeah, if if they feel the need to get rid of him, that's a pretty good reason why. <laughs> Here's the one question I've got, though. Again, this is another little bit of speculation down the line. Again, this is the internet age. There really are no long-term secrets, at least not forever. Eventually, the truth behind what happened a couple days ago will get out. I have a the feeling that is, it's going to be really soon, yes. like in yeah. the next week. The question is, when it all does break, could we be looking at a, a Matt Hardy-style situation where someone gets released for causing trouble backstage, the crowd at large catches wind of it, they end up feeling, oh, yeah, Del Rio is in the right here, why'd they fire him? Boo, boo, boo. And then all of a sudden... The, through that coercion, maybe Del Rio will show up and just like randomly slap uh, a backstage worker in the face, and then boom, instant face turn for Del Rio. Here's Lots the problem, just like Matt Hardy did. Here's the problem with that scenario. Okay, Matt Hardy had already made big feud with Edge because of what happened with that. If Del Rio is just gonna come back and slap around backstage workers. That's not going to make anybody money. Okay. That's not going to do it. It's going to be a waste of time for Del Rio this? and everyone. How about this? Easy fix. Make it someone in the authority. Make it Triple H. Make it Corporate Kane. Make it someone in the in there. And, hey, let's face it. They're hurting for main event level faces now. Or at least a lot of them are down and out. If they really want to make... Assuming this is a quasi-work at the very most... And they want to make Del Rio a face, and they want him in that role, or just someone to fill that role. I think it's possible. Not very likely, but I do think it is possible that they can rebound from this. If the WWE Universe, the crowd, whatever you want to call them, 
if fans react in a similar fashion, I think they can bring back Del Rio if they really want to. And here's my rebuttal. They tried to face turn with Del Rio already. It worked like for this. it worked for about a month. While he was taking on the big show and the big show was the huge jerk off and whatever and Del Rio was the only one to stand up to him. Fine, it worked for a month. And okay. him standing up to Jack Swagger There's and Zepp Coulter. The problem, yeah. okay, is that everyone would know that it's fabricated with he didn't really slap Triple H in the face and that's why that's why he left. They knew that Matt Hardy was screwed over by Edge and Lita. That Edge and Lita, whether they actually cheated or it was emotional or anything like that, it was ready-made. Everybody knew that it was the truth, and that's why they went so crazy for Matt Hardy. With If you're saying, make it, that it was Corporate Kane or Triple H... No one's going to believe no, that. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that they're the ones that made the comment. I'm no, saying I'm that saying... those are the powers that be that maybe they went on the WWE Twitter, maybe they made the decision to ultimately fire Alberto Del Rio, thus setting up the feud in question. Because, again, if, he, if Del Rio just went after... Again, I'm going to sound hypocritical because of the comments I made like five minutes ago. But if all it was was Del Rio just going up to random backstage aides and just slapping them... There's no long-term money feud to that, obviously. There's just a bunch of backstage A's. They're not wrestlers. By have, using the all the <coughs> characters that the authority are... Uh, the on-screen presence of the authority that they're used for, if they do actually end up bringing Del Rio back, if there is an onslaught of bad press when all the, the entire story breaks out and comes out after all this... I think this is entirely salvageable. I don't think so. I, d I, the, I have my issues, and uh, with the Del Rio I, or I just execution. don't think I don't think there's money. There is, yeah, Del I don't Rio. think there's money either. I and think I think that he lost his money appeal, to me, anyway. As soon as they got rid of the character, if they if they bring back that character, Alberto Del Rio doesn't do well as a face. Whether it's in a sto whether it's in any kind of storyline, if you're gonna bring him back, he's gotta be. But you already knew that he heel, and I even then, even then, he didn't really make money. Even you're you're talking about the need for main event faces, and I don't think that Del Rio fits the bill. I don't think that's just that's just me. So you think but Del Rio's? Gone I think for Del Rio's good. Think, gone for good. I think he's gone for, for good too. He's. Like I said earlier, he's been wanting to go out, and he actually known have a reputation to not be a favorable person backstage to wrestlers and non wrestler employees. This isn't gonna hurt. This isn't gonna hurt WWE at all. Even if it is something silly, it's just him defending himself against racial uh, stabs at him. It doesn't matter. He's he doesn't want to come back. I think he's gonna go back to Mexico. And if anything, bring Ricardo Rodriguez with him, and, re and bring back the yeah. Ricardo Alberto team in I, Mexico. I, I have a feeling. Uh, yeah, I have. A, I have a feeling that that he was he was gonna ask for his release sooner or later. Yeah. So he could go back to Mexico and do what he was doing in Mexico beforehand. And I, this was the. He knew that his time was coming. Okay. I I don't think he did it. To get out of his contract no. or whatever, but it's it's one of those like uh, he's gonna show up on Twitter in the next couple of days and just be like, oh well, back to Mexico we go. Exactly and, after his ninety day, he'll be clause. fine. Mm -hmm. He'll be fine. I don't I don't think we, I don't think we'll see Alberto Del Rio in a WWE ring at least for a very long time. I that's suck such a that. shame. I, I just hate to see stories like this where that's how people end up leaving. It's it's such a shame. I want to like Alberto Del Rio. I must have given him as many shots as anyone can give him. It's it's just a shame. I not I even told you guys I'm not shedding a tear. Yeah, well you haven't cared about Del Rio in a long time, if ever. I don't think yeah, if he's I don't good think I've ever. He's good he's good in the ring, I give him that. <laughs> he's just not entertaining for me to be invested in him. 
and as no what one, most I people blame you for that. He's a good he's a good wrestler, but entertaining wise and personality wise and character wise, there's really nothing there after the after they got rid of. Once they got rid of the cars and the Rodriguez and Rodriguez <laughs> and the Rodriguez and the Rodriguez <laughs> and the arrogant aristocrat, instead then, of just being an angry Mexican, then then he's just then then it was just like dude who comes <laughs> out, he he was. This is gonna sound racial, but it's really not. He he is the Mexican Christian. Comes out, puts on good fifteen minute matches. You don't hear from him again until the next week. The only difference is he doesn't get concussions as much as Christian does. That explains a lot, uh, at least on my point. <laughs> I'm, I'm really surprised that you guys went through that entire spiel without using the phrase solid B-plus player. Get out! You want to know out. why? Because after he, got rid of, after he got rid of the aristocrat, he wasn't even a B-plus player. I don't. I never I'll thought give, he was I'll an. A, a, I've never thought he was an A plus player. I'll give him with. a B minus player. I'm not saying it was just the way you describe it. It's like you, you <coughs> sound like you were going to go into the exact same B plus player spiel, but I ex- still, except I don't. accurate. All right. Next, yeah. all we can say to end this conversation: Good luck with all your future endeavors, Alberto Del Rio. Go and have fun in Mexico with what you do best. All right. <laughs> Too bad you're not going to be missed by anyone on this show, apparently. No, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, next next topic. An image was released of Triple H with the newly designed WWE Championship with the network logo. We don't have to go into detail about these and next two. And it was two. exactly what it looked like. It, what, yeah. what I kind of figured it would like. With the WWE Network logo on it? Allow yes. me to vomit in my mouth. <laughs> no, it's... I really didn't think it was that different. It was just the slightly yeah. updated WWE logo. It, I don't know if anyone was expecting anything different. Let me let me put it this way, and I'll just end it there. Right. I like I like the WWE Championship design, just not as the actual WWE Championship belt to represent your best guy instead to have just a big old logo. <coughs> I see. I definitely see what you're talking about, but then again, I used to feel this way. But after looking through some of the other sketches of some of the other belts that they were considering, they they could have done a lot worse. Oh, I agree. I've seen the designs too, and I agree with you. Like I, I said, I like the design. I do like the design, just not as the title to represent your best guy for your company. There was one design where it had the WWE in the center with the. Edges of the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, I like that one. I liked that one. I liked that one. It kind of add a little more word elegance to the title. Yeah. I and think the, the last real good WWE Championship was the Undisputed Belt back in the early 2000s. And shouldn't you have John Cena? Shouldn't you have the actual champion like holding the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship belt? Well, then again, you know, it's not like... I mean, like, just it's, a, fine, that it's, for it's one. fine that it's Triple H. It's fine that it's it Triple H. It was one behind-the-scenes just... photo. I don't think we can really judge how they're actually officially unveiling the thing yet. Well, I'm going to save this for summer, for the SummerSlam prediction show next week of how they're going to introduce the new championship. Oh, yeah. Well, oh. This, this is a whole other topic of conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. match! Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a whole other topic of conversation. Now, we're, we could spend another three hours talking about this. It's, All right. I'm holding my tongue. I can't wait to see it done. All right. And the big news that WWE likes to promote on Raw and SmackDown Hulk Hogan's birthday on Monday, celebration on Monday, with the hinting of an NWO reunion. Thank you, Scott Hall. Yeah, on I know. Your Twitter. Twitter. I know, your, right? On your, on your Twitter. <laughs> they are hinting on the, dot, on the WWE special guests. Michael Cole, I wonder who the special guest is. I'm, I'm surprisingly wonder... okay with this. I'm okay with this, too. This is probably okay with, the yeah. best thing that's going to happen. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, Scott Hall isn't back in great shape. Kevin Nash is always Kevin Nash and awesome. And it's, it's Hogan. You could just show up and you know, flex the pythons and do brother, brother, And you brother. know that Cena's going to be out there sucking up to Hogan. But it's okay because it's it's Hogan. You suck up to Hogan. Everybody sucks it, up to Hogan. It's fine. As long it's as he, cool. As long you as would he suck doesn't up try to Hogan. rip I off his... I would suck up to Hogan. I would. 
Bah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he doesn't try and rip his shirt off and try and like fake the leg drop, it, he's good. He just shows up, throws out some brothers. Unless he gives the leg drop to Damian Sandow. <laughs> if he gives the leg drop to anybody, his his his, his hip will implode. his hip will explode. Yeah. Even though he's he's openly admitted that he wants to have one more match. Stop what? it! Stop <laughs> it! Hulk <laughs> Hogan, stop it! You're going to destroy yourself. Well, hey, I'd love a weekend with uh, with Lana, but I know it's not going to happen. I mean, come on. There's it's a Hulk lot of Hogan. things I want in life I'm not going to get, and this is one thing that Hogan is not going to get. If he I was about to say, you Hogan. want a Hulk Hogan match that you're never going to get? No. <laughs> it's got to be five Hogan minutes of hobbling. Was... <laughs> it's just good. If it Sounds is like Damien Sandow. Lana too. Oh, okay. There if it go. is Damien Sandow. Five minutes of it's just, now I'm done. It's just hooking up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was bad. Yeah, I'm ignoring you. Uh, <laughs> just what is it? Is Damien Sandow punch hooking up? Punch, it's the end of the week. Leg drop and <laughs> end. I am a real American. I don't even think you should do that. Just, just uh, Damien Sandow comes out to talk to uh, Hulk Hogan, and that's when Scott Hall and Kevin Nash show up behind him with a super shirt it. on, and they do, and they <laughs> do whatever they got to do. Uh, dated Sandow. reference. Dated <laughs> reference. No. Okay. No. You want to know what's going to happen? <laughs> Here's what's As going I'm to happen. Here. What's going to happen? Damien Sandow is going. Hulk Hogan's music is going to hit. Out comes Damien Sandow, dresses Hulk Hogan. He does a really, actually, surprisingly spot on uh, Hulk Hogan impression. But everyone knows it's it's not. Everyone knows it's not Hogan. It's obviously Sandow. Then Hogan's Would music you think hits it would for be real. Hulk Hogan? Hogan's music hits for real. Now everyone starts marking out. Everyone's like, yay, Hogan. Like, what you doing on my birthday, brother? <laughs> you know, I could actually see this. I, and then, I could see it. And then since, obviously, Hogan can't move, what he does is he just grabs a microphone, okay? For some reason, Jimmy Hart is there. So he yeah, grabs, and he grabs now we're megaphone. <laughs> okay, now you lost us. <laughs> he grabs Jimmy Hart's megaphone. He just immediately points... At Damien Sandow, you! And then all of a sudden they just have this like comedy effect where you just have a bunch of wind blush, wind rushing. Okay, is this what we're okay, talking stop, about? Cool. Is, is and this... then he just immediately rolls out of the ring sh- through sheer force of you. This is this is going back to uh, the warrior. Our little discussion about the. Uh, it, Someone exploding from the power from of Hulk Hogan, power of Hulk Hogan, of Hulk Hogan, and Hulk and the Warrior. I do not know what you were talking about. Yeah, because you were the one who came up with that too. <laughs> I don't recall any such thing. You know what would be actually kind of funnier if uh, Hulk Hogan comes out normally and does his birthday. All of a sudden, the NWO music hits, and it's Damian Sandow dressed up as Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and then Scott Hall and Kevin Nash come out and take him out. And cheer and actually celebrate and with Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Stop it with the with okay. you. <laughs> Just you, you stop it. All right. Yeah, exactly. I think you can you st- tell it's the end of the week? Exactly. <laughs> you stop it. You stop. You. Saying. All right. I think we've looked uh, long enough behind I the think curtains. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh, now let's. Turn face and head down the ramp into the ring and talk about Monday Night Raw. Yes, let's. Yes, let's. And pretty fun way to open up Raw, having the authority come out and Triple H completely trolling the WWE universe, continuously going, reminding us that the WWE Network is nine ninety nine. All I got to say is <laughs> on this is while I was watching Raw, I was just. Face palming the WWE crowd, saying Triple H is trolling you. He is making you all look like idiots. This was where every time you saying that it's for nine ninety nine, you just see that looks like hey, you guys are dumb. Well, really, this is not a case of trolling. Yes, it is. No, it is not. And I'll explain why. You are so optimistic. No, I'm not. Captain Optimist. No, 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 I'm no, not. no it not actually makes sense because I have a feeling I know what he's going to say. There's and it more does make to sense. this than that. Again, I think we've all been to enough live shows where we know that, hey, it's fun to chant things. 
Again, we're deep in the heart of Texas here, deep where they're like. Again, we all saw it. It's a. It was a really enthusiastic crowd. They were ready. Again, it was in that appetizer portion of the show where it doesn't matter what you're served up, crap or not, you're ready to go along with whatever you're served, even when it's crap. They were ready to chant stuff. They were handed nine nine ninety nine. They ran with nine ninety nine, even though it was dumb. And we also can't forget the other part of this, where we're dealing with Triple H here. Triple H the is ultimate troller. has no, been Triple trolling H, for the last since WrestleMania. Triple, yeah. Not only is Triple H an experienced professional wrestler who knows how to work a crowd, he is also does at his best when he is a heel. Triple H is a heel right now, and he has been for quite some time. And a, he's a guy who has openly admitted off camera that he's been hating on social media to death, and he wants to make them all look completely stupid. And that's what he's been doing the past couple of weeks. But Texas, a live Texas crowd, is not the internet. Let's face it. Well, when you're chanting nine ninety nine, I don't know, man. Yeah, <laughs> he's, make, he's rubbing the point that if you say one thing so many times. He will lead the crowd and make them look completely dumb. And that's what it... Which is definitely a heel, but I think instead of being the diabolical heel heel that he was in Evolution, he's the trollish. He's the corporate troll troll. He's the corporate chill troll of heel now. Exactly. But right now with this... With this one moment, I'm not saying with... During the execution of the entire night. But in this one opening sequence... The execution was very good. It was. It was I'm not it saying was it was funny. Yet. I thought, yeah. it was, again, it was sort of a tongue-in-cheek thing with him, and he knew that that if they were going, if they really needed to amp up the shilling of the WWE network and have it look remotely presentable, that was really the only way you could do it. I'm going back and forth between which was the best troll moment for Triple H in the last couple of weeks. This one, or when he got, or the battleground. I was sitting with my buddy Mark last night, and he Post- said he was never going to watch this show again. <laughs> and he goes, posted on Twitter, start complaining about it on Facebook. He was just completely destroying social media. I'll tell you what. <laughs> say what you will about Triple H. He I knows know, what he's doing. Yeah. I know yeah. a lot of people don't like Triple H, and a lot of them have very good reasons for that. But win, lose, or draw. You have to admit that Triple H, in recent years, has become incredibly self-aware. Oh, yeah. And it is, when it's done right, it is a great thing to see. He knows how to, when to really amp it up and to really push people's buttons to be that maximum authoritative heel. He knows when it's right to, you know, do what's best for business in real life while still making it presentable on TV. He knows that, you know, obviously he's human and he's got his grievances. And uh, he's going to use that as ammunition for his uh, for his heel promos. It's, he's good. He's not the perfect wrestler. He's not that cool, badass heel from the Attitude Era that maybe he'd like to present himself to be. But let's face it, at this point, if you don't think that Triple H has absolutely nothing to offer and just married himself into a point of authority... Then you have Stop not been it. watching Triple H. Stop yeah. it! That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm a Triple H fan, but yeah, that's that's my. D- I'm yeah, I'm a Triple H. I'm H fan. I'm a, yeah, I'm a Triple H fan. I'm a Triple too. H fan, and I love his trolling. Yeah, I, so, I love. I have loved the last month of Triple H oh, TV. As do I. <laughs> I. I'm loving it too. Just how much he can make. He can just have the crowd do whatever he wants. The corporate that troll said, work. The corporate but troll even, work. But that this is the point. Doing. Is, this is, is the point where he's just basically giving a middle finger to the crowd, saying, you are all just gullible. But he's doing it with a smile on his face, just saying, I, I still love it. He did it with a crowd that was really receptive to that kind of thing. And that, just that, that would not fly in New Jersey, let's face it. Yeah. I'd, not for long, anyway. It was good comedy. It probably wouldn't work anywhere else. But, but that's comedy. why he did it. Yep. That's why he did it where he did, and that was the only time and place... Where it could be worked in the show and it wasn't an overall distraction. And to break the trolling, you get into it. Roman Reigns coming out wanting Randy Orton right now. Orton wanting Reigns as well. But instead, 
we get a last man standing match with Kane, which it was a pretty good match. It was a good big man. Good big man, man back and forth. Match. You knew, I knew from the beginning that Reigns was going to take it. Duh. Because when has there been a yeah. Kane Roman Reigns match where actually Kane took the victory? Yeah. What does it say about how, the, how your Raw is going when I am way more interested in a shill for the WWE Network than I am for a Kane Roman Reigns match? Like, seriously, at this point, I know that it's, it's a little preemptive, but as soon as Roman Reigns came out, it's like, okay, never mind, fun's over. It, like, immediately killed my hype. I'm not at that point yet. I'm slowly getting there. He's slowly getting I, there. I still like him, but he's still he's getting pushed he's getting too, the, too he's, fast. He's getting the John Cena Brock Lesnar push. Yes. Brock Lesnar deserved it. John Cena, eh. <laughs> but it's... And I don't like when they shove it in your face. Exactly. Okay? No I does. like it when it's organic and work up from the ranks. Like what they're doing with Ambrose and Rollins right now. How that's working out? That's that's what how I like to see it done. I don't like, I don't like what they did with Reigns and just shove him in our face. So you're gonna get thirteen eliminations in the Royal Rumble. You like you're Reigns? You're gonna you're gonna you run, will cheer for you're Reigns. You're gonna run the table in the Survivor Series. You will buy the Reigns T-shirt. The only thing that you will was interesting. Stop it. The only thing that was interesting that came out of this whole thing with Roman Reigns and Kane is after the after the match was over. Later in the night, Roman Reigns run, yay. Kane comes in to Stephanie McMahon in Triple H's office. Not a single word was said. He once again took off the mask and gave it to Stephanie McMahon. Obviously, this is just so he can promote See No Evil 2. But I want to see where they're going to go with this story. Here's, here's the problem for me, okay, with Kane taking off his mask. It's, okay. gotten, it's gotten to the point where I don't care anymore it's one of those oh he just took off the mask again all right well i'm a hard i'm a hardcore canaanite so it's intriguing i don't i don't care here's it's what's like, going then to he's happen. gonna then he's then in like six months four to six months he's gonna put the mask back on again and i'm gonna be like still don't care probably two to three months in four here's days. what's <laughs> going to happen stuff no <laughs> Yes, yes, fool. <laughs> that stuff is going to happen on Monday Night Raw, Troll. that which may or may not have something to do with Kane. That's what's going to happen. The fantasy booking portion of the show is now concluded. Everyone, enjoy your day. <laughs> okay, no, no, after no, no, are, are you sure? Are, are you yeah, sure just, just go, go, okay, go, go. All right. Here's what's going to happen. Zack Ryder comes out on Raw. You're done. That's all that needs to be said. That's all that needs to be said. Well, wait, I don't want to hear. I, I don't want to hear it. There's more. No, it's getting that old dandy territory. No, I don't want to know. You, you, don't, you, but you don't know. No, okay. we don't. We don't no, want to no, no. know. No, no, no. I don't want to know. It's comedy hour. Let's go. Okay. I don't want to know. All right. Okay. Zach Ritter comes out on Raw, grabs a mic, says, "Okay, all they told me about my next opponent is that." It's someone who just got signed by WWE. I don't know who it is, but whoever it is, I'm going to beat him L.I. style. Woo, 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 you know it. Some strange new music hits. Out comes Jacob Goodnight. No. Squashes Del... Squashes Del Real. Squashes Zack Ryder. One, two, three. Hits him with, like, the chain, whatever. Wears a mask. Whatever. Jacob Goodnight wins. I see no evil too on DVD coming this September. Wow, no! If they do that, I'm done. That's it. I'm done with this. I didn't. I gave up listening to this. <laughs> All right. Moving on. You know what? Speaking. Pro- that'll probably be a heck of a lot more fun than anything else they come up. Yeah, with. probably. Maybe. Moving on. One major thing that actually was the highlight of the night for me was. The whole Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose beat the clock challenge to determine the stipulation uh, yes. for their match at SummerSlam. Now, with Del Rio versus Dean Ambrose, as soon as they hit the 10 minute mark, I'm like, okay, I already know what's going to happen. Dean Ambrose is going to win, and he's going to cause Seth, uh, Seth Rollins his match. Once it got to, what was it? It came up to 15, 15. 15 no, it minutes was, and 42 it was, seconds. Yeah, it was just almost 16 minutes. I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what's going to happen because they're really pushing this. Oh, Seth Rollins has this in the bag. Oh, this is going to be it's going to be a big challenge. 
Next thing, Seth Rollins comes out, scheduled to have a match with RVD, but no, they, Triple H decided to change the opponent. Out comes Heath Slater. Slater's going to slate. Slater is going to slate. Right now, the fir- as soon as Slater came out, the first thing that popped into my head is, oh my God, they're giving Heath Slater the hurricane treatment by pinning a main eventer. I don't even care. He's, he's beaten Jericho and Edge already, so I'm like, it's... When he was in Nexus. But this is like when no, he's... He this beat is, Jericho in NXT. <laughs> not not even Ooh. not even in the Nexus. So I won't go so far as to say it's the hurricane treatment, because you know that you know that that's a fluke and it's over and he's got to be killed until the end of time. After that, the only reason I say it's the hurricane treatment is just how he's positioned in the company right now as a joke jobber. That having him beat a future main eventer star like Seth Rollins. Is that like, oh my god, like everyone knew, like everyone thinks Seth, uh, Seth Rollins is going to win. This is going to be an easy victory. Out comes Dean Ambrose, opening the Money in the Bank briefcase, ripping up the contract, pouring soda, pouring popcorn, putting in JBL's hat, closing it, and what do you know, with the roll up, one, two, three, Heath Slater takes the win, Dean Ambrose gets the stipulation call. First of all, the match between Dean Ambrose and Alberto Del Rio. It was kind of awkward in the beginning. It was kind of weird. wasn't going very well, but as most of the times do in a Dean Ambrose match, it got going towards the end, and it was good. It was good fun. It was a good TV match. Mm-hmm. With the Seth rollins Heath Slater match, I was so entertained by what was going on outside the ring. That it doesn't matter to me that Heath Slater beat Seth Rollins. Oh, no, it's, I don't it's, care It's either. amazing. It was amazing. And everything was so predictable, okay? But because of the entertainment factor of what was going on, it was predictable to me. I see the look on your face. But it was it was predictable to me after the, not mine. after the 15 minute, 42 second deal and the way they were building it up. That it was predictable that Dean Ambrose was going to cost Seth Rollins in some way. That part, yes. But because it was so entertaining to watch how Dean Ambrose screwed screwed Seth Rollins, it didn't matter how predictable it was to me. Oh yeah, I second that. So I give it's it's good fun. That I give that good fun. The storyline moves forward and. With the news of what the match is going to be that came out of SmackDown tonight, makes sense, and we're going to have some good times at SummerSlam. Easily. This, I think we're all, we're all of the consensus opinion here. This was the segment of the night that made Raw. <laughs> However, I wouldn't say it, it was definitely enjoyable, but I would not say it was necessarily uh, predictable in the same way that you said, and I'll explain why. Normally, when we see beat the clock challenge matches which i think are great for tv by the way i agree they, not only do they tend to have a tendency to continue feuds but they also have a little bit of an incentive to keep the matches brief for tv keep them moving at a brisk pace you get some decent spots and it's fun with this but again typically we we usually see more than three people involved or more you mean three, three matches ma- three matches three people Three people plus involved. If they're depending on what they're doing, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I personally have not seen a beat the clock challenge match where, it's, at least not in some time, where it was just two people. No, I haven't Norm- seen a beat the clock challenge that wasn't for a title shot. And- Normally, a beat yeah. the clock challenge Years. usually goes for uh, elimination chamber. Who gets the right, right. Who gets to go in last? That yeah. type of ordeal. More yeah, than, and also more than one qualifier, and yeah. also for a ti- and also for like a title shot at the next pay per view, they that, do it sometimes. Yeah. Right, but, but again, my but, point being, my point being, mm-hmm. with this, normally you start off with one big time time frame, and then you just rush to beat that time. Like a lot of us were thinking, when he hit that ma- that time of like fifteen and change. I was like, "Whoa!" Obviously, they're gonna do, have to do some shenan- some serious shenanigans, or else 
Seth Rollins is going over and he's going to have to pick it. But no, they're not going to possibly do that since they built up all this time Dean Ambrose is chasing Seth and chasing Seth and trying to back him into a corner. He's he's due. So obviously he's going to get the stipulation pick. That much was predictable, but what was not predictable is the method as to how that they were going to get to that point. I figured they were going to go on over and on with uh, Rob Van Dam. Mm-hmm. And then when I saw Heath Slater, it's like, hmm, that sort of made me think a little bit. Figured, okay, maybe it was going to be a disqualification. Maybe it was going to be some sort of interference. I did not imagine a legit roll up by Heath Slater on Seth Rollins in the year 2014. This, that alone, the finish alone was fantastic. Mm-hmm. For just for its like, whoa. And the battle. crowd were nuts. The crowd did go nuts. <laughs> again, I wouldn't even call it, I, again, I get the what you're alluding to, but at first I was going to call this more of a Barry Horowitz win after he beat that one body Dono. I forget, what was it? I don't know. I don't even know. But even then, that's not a real. I don't think that's an accurate enough description of what we saw here. It was just a regular jobber who just won with a roll up victory, and it was. hasn't quite been an established name in some time. But again, it. It's not really anything in particular. It's just he's Slater. And you know that he's going to get murdered on Raw next oh, week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how it goes. But in the meantime... Or Dean Ambrose is going to interfere and Heath Slater's going to beat him again. <laughs> 2-0, and o, baby. 2-0, and o, baby. He's already, he's already gotten the 2-0 and o thing because he beat Dashingly Gold on main, on main event Did this really? past week. Yeah. Wait, he Heath Slater's on a winning streak. Heath Slater is on a winning streak oh, right Lord. now. Wow. <laughs> I know. In, Wrestling who, is weird. WWE Wrestling. is giving me hope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> One of me. One, One of, of me. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, there's nothing more else to more. say we'll other than lumber, Lumberjack match. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I can't wait to see what ideas they have for that yeah, one. Yeah, there's... I, it wasn't quite like I was, Said with the, I think like a lot of us have said, there's I don't think any of us really saw this coming. But the more I think about it, the more it, it definitely makes sense. Bringing that whole element of mm-hmm. okay, now Seth Rollins has nowhere else to hide. Everyone's just gonna be forcing him back into the ring. Now it's gonna be a legit match, or at least as legit as it could get for now. And if the rumors where they say that they want a continuous feud since it's going so well are true. They can easily expand this to next month's pay-per-view where it could be anything between a cage match, Hell in a Cell, something to keep them confined in there. Oh. I think that they can let, they can make this last until Hell in a Cell. I was about to say, maybe they could have it at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. They could, very well could. Yeah. They very well could. All right. Pipe dreams. <laughs> really big dreams that I really hope that they ha- that. Oh, please. Compared to, to everything, all out. the other nonsense I've been spewing out that this whole night, that's really that's actually surprisingly down to earth. All right, <laughs> another big moment is Chris Jericho versus Luke Harper. He's already beaten Eric Rowan on SmackDown to get him out of uh, ringside for Bray Wyatt. This one is to have Luke Harper eliminated from ringside. And Bray Wyatt does it for him. <laughs> and Bray Wyatt made the decision for him. When he put when Jericho put Harper in the walls of Jericho. Come in. Interference. Luke Harper's out. Bray Wyatt doesn't care. He's going to have fun with Chris Jericho at SummerSlam. And, and now that he's got the secret weapon, the Throat punch of the doom. Throat punch of doom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was like as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Wait a minute! Did he just do a Samoan spike? Kind of, to an extent. Except to... it's not Samoan. Yeah, <laughs> it's a southern spike. <laughs> it's it southern southern redneck spike. Not I wasn't going say. for that, but there you go. Yeah, I gotta get my mind out of the gutter. <laughs> yeah. You gotta. You I gotta just, apologize. You are just. I'm in bad shape. <laughs> You just are just worrying me, fool. Oh and boy, 
It's going to be a lonely, lonely weekend. Next is Rusev beating down Jack Swagger with a flag after he squashed Sin Cara off the air during yeah, commercial that tells, break. That tells you how much they give a damn about Sin Cara. Or about Hunakara. Uh, Hunakara. Hunakara. Oi, oi, oi. And this is a big oi, considering you lost off-air promo. Zeb Coulter comes out with a pretty damn good promo, having the pictures of real Americans. And next thing you know, I don't know if they were actually trying to do that with Swagger, but all all that matters is Rusev beats him with a flag. Almost about to attack Zeb Coulter, but no, they, they leave. And did you notice Real that American the uh, flag rocks. barely hit Swagger on that clothesline out of the uh, out of the ring? Yeah. Out of the ring, it barely hit him. It like touched him on the chest, and Swagger sold it like he'd been shot. <laughs> good for good for Swagger. Good for Swagger. It was a good segment. I I like the way that this feud is coming along. Do I like the idea of a flag match? Not really but it makes sense given the storyline it also makes sense that they don't want to have rusev pin or submit at this time so the best way for him to lose is like just grabbing a flag and that's it yeah and there's and there's no guarantee that swagger's gonna win in the first place this is this is the only match where it makes sense where swagger would win yes okay Mm -hmm. in my opinion i agree but okay just Rusev gets a measure of revenge, as you call it, because Swagger's been ankle locking him to hell from ever since Battleground. But as much as I'm liking <laughs> this feud, I feel like they're just repeating themselves over and over the last couple of weeks. It's uh, Lana doing her normal thing of promoting Vladimir Putin, and then Zeb Coulter comes there, tells her to shut up, and then just says, "We're doing this for." This guy, we're doing it for this woman, we're doing it for the soldiers. I feel like this is like the same thing that's been going on since their feud really started. Not other than adding a flag to it. There's a, there's there, only so much I, you can really do with an as mu- American. I like the I do yeah. like the feud. It's just I wish there was something else to it other than just throwing in their flags. Yeah, because if Swagger wins, then there's got to be a rematch, and where do you go from there? Okay, that's it. You can go into a legit win for Jack for Jack Swagger. Obviously, the this this has actually has a lot of hype to it uh, for being as old school of a feud as it is. I think it goes without saying. Again, we'll go into greater detail next week during our prediction show. Swagger goes over. Then we can be like, okay, but you never actually pinned their submitted Rusev. Yada yada. Russia is still superior. They can drag this feud out for one more month and then sell another pay per view, more subscriptions on the WWE Network, only nine ninety nine, and uh, do whatever. Maybe we'll make it like a legit uh, thing. Maybe a submission match for all for all they care. It's just eh, a little something. Maybe. Yeah, that's fine. But in the storyline sense, like what they're talking about and all that, where do you go from here? That's like adding the stipulation. Add, I mean, adding, adding the stipulation, stipulation is fine, yeah. But but what else can be said on the mic that hasn't, say, that already, hasn't been already been said? said. Exactly. Nothing. Exactly. Don't. This is just an exchange of words at this point. This, you know, this is more about nationalism. Exactly. And at this point, if you do a flag match, again, this is just one. Se- no, this is mostly serious. Before I was just you know, okay. semi-serious, joking around. This is. Mostly serious. One way they could do it, or that I can see, you do the flag match, game of wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. One of them just grabs a flag and that's it. Yeah. Between Lana and Zeb Coulter, they could be. That could be enough for them since they're managers. They're not wrestlers. They're like, okay, ideal. Oh, geez, Russia, America, Russia number one, America, whatever. Eventually. Rusev and Swagger are just like, okay, enough of this crap. No more talking. Enough about ideologies. This guy, across the ring from me, has been putting me through the ringer like I never have before. Enough of the stupid gimmicks. Enough of the stupid nationalism. Enough of the stupid flags. Now, this is personal. 
No nationalism, no countries, no managers talking in our ears, telling us what to say or what to think. Right now, we are not countrymen of any sort. We are wrestlers without countries. We are just wrestlers, period. That's why we're just going to do what we do best. We're going to wrestle. That was why we're going to do a straight up match. We're going to do a wrestling match. We're going to do a submission match. We're going to do an Iron Man match. We could do something. Just something without gimmicks. I'd and go that's how you can, match. I'd go submission match. But that is yeah. just one way of many that you can continue to feud and keep me interested. I think the only way they really can it's is possible. submission. I don't yeah. see them doing an Iron Man match. Again, that's why I said submission is the first thing. Because yeah. it's getting weird. Yeah, I guess exactly. I want. I actually do like the fact that now it's because it would become personal, where they just like no more talking. Let's just fight. Because yeah. what I do if like that, cause, what if someone grabs the flag, okay, and then just his head, his mind explodes and just starts beating the crap out of. And instead of the like Rusev wins, mm-hmm. okay, grabs the flag and instead of the small attack that we got on Raw, just starts going postal and just takes out Swagger, takes out Colter, and then and just and goes insane and then and then that's how you move on. No more talking. It's just two guys beating the crap out of each other. Submission match, however you roll with it, however you roll with it, there's the way to move it forward. It's not fun and games ideologies anymore. You took me out, you took my manager out, he's a 55-year-old man, or he's, a, he's an old man, all right, and you're going to take him out the way you took him out? I'm going to screw you up. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this is just another thought I have, I'm just sort of flying my seat in my pants with this. So much of this feud to this point has been so amazingly old school and so good about it that I am pretty much convinced right now that that's all that they would need to keep this feud going and keep people interested if they if that's something they do end up wanting to do. Which at this point, I hope they do. I, I'm, I'm marking out for my own idea at this point. This is ridiculous. Just watch. WWE Creative is just yeah. going to do something completely dumb and basically repeat the whole thing just instead Probably. of flags we'll just and be like my point, submission move is better than your submission move and Probably. at that point we're just gonna be we're gonna be tuned out <laughs> we're gonna... yeah and i don't want to be i want to like these guys but come on wwe give me something to work with and another thing that i want them to work with is the intercontinental championship match set for SummerSlam between the miz and dolph ziggler and what do they do on raw have Ziggler completely squashed Cesaro. Okay, let's face uh, it. Okay, I'm just going to put this out there right now. I'm not saying Cesaro is on a downturn like the, what we've seen the crap of Sandow. Okay, I'm not saying he's on that, but something happened. Some, I something happened. I don't know... I don't know what happened, but something happened. Cesaro is not in the company's good graces right now because he's on. There's no re- there's no reason that Ziggler should have squashed Cesaro. If you're gonna have someone, if it, you're gonna have him squash someone, it shouldn't have been Cesaro. I can be perfectly honest. I would have rather had uh, switch Del Rio and Cesaro and have Cesaro face Dean Ambrose in the match. Because he's the one who's been wanting to be an authority guy. Who else than have for the authority guy than Cesaro? And then have Del Rio, who apparently is, even though it was unknown at the time, on his way out. And doing and having not, no, nothing special in the future for him. Cesaro has a future. The one difference is, Triple H likes Cesaro. Vince really is not a huge fan of him. That's probably why he's getting on the lower ranks, because I've read, and I've said this on the show before, they have a plan for Cesaro later, but it's after they have Roman Reigns pushed to the top. After they're finished with the project with Roman Reigns, they're moving on with Cesaro being a top face. And I want to see that. I think he's capable of doing it, at least starting a face turn somewhat right now, because He's doing nothing as a heel except getting uh, squashed by uh, Ziggler. I like Ziggler. I really do. But he is not 
a point he's not at the point where he should be squashing someone who a couple of months ago was in the world heavyweight title match. I just want wish I instead of having the Miz and Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship because of this, throw Cesaro in. Put him in a SummerSlam match for something special like the Intercontinental Championship because as much as I like Miz, as much as I love like Ziggler, they're being pushed like someone who's United States Championship material. And we all understand why Sheamus is gone because he has the flu right now, so he can't be around. But I'm just not sold on this being the Intercontinental Championship feud that it deserves. Throwing Cesaro in there, a guy who's trying to get on good terms with the authority, that would actually help him. And he'll just be a neutral guy. He doesn't have to pull heel things. He can <laughs> still... He... Swiss guy is neutral. <laughs> I know you meant to do that. <laughs> Touche. Touche. But yeah, I, I, I definitely see what you're going at here. Because people like Cesaro. The fans yeah. enjoy this when he does the swing. They liked when the, uh, they did the swing to Cena last week. They liked when uh, he's just in a match because everything he does is awesome. He does that one giant superplex when they're on the when they're on the bottom. When they, he has that awesome uppercut. He has that great feat of strength that everyone likes to wrong. see about him. You're not wrong. What the whole thing is how they're booking him. It's just it's it's not going to hurt him. I definitely see him rising up from this. They just I wish they do something better with him. Like for me adding him to the Intercontinental Championship because having that loss to Ziggler would actually would put me over the edge of like you how dare you blah 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 I got my ego the best of me because I was such an angry person now I'm actually going to treat you guys seriously and I want that championship because just having the Miz versus Ziggler it like I said it's all about like oh I'm the movie star you're a good looking guy don't touch the face that's not Intercontinental Championship feud material in not for me. Yeah. Not for me. Because everyone knows how I feel about the IC title. It deserves a lot better. And ha- putting it on someone like Cesaro, who's on the uh, road to being a main event guy, a top face in the future, what better, play- what better thing to put on him than having him be the Intercontinental Championship and having him have legit feuds? You're not wrong. However, this is just, for whatever reason, good, better, and different, this is not the, th- the thing that they're going with for at least for the next month. The only rationale, the only rationale I can see for them doing this is, this way is because Miz just in the bat- over the top bra- battle royal for the for the strap well after it was vacated he screwed uh, th- over yeah. Ziggler. Yeah, so exactly. it makes sense that Ziggler would They'll do this the for me. Yeah, they'll do this for maybe this uh, until. I hope it's just this once. It's gotta be. And besides, it's, it's gotta be. It's gonna be a good match, okay? Because you're still gonna have, you're still gonna have the moves that each of them do. Ziggler performs like a champ. You just don't have the Miz going all out because hey, don't touch the face. But the, and the match is gonna be fine. It's gonna I be think fine. Too, I do, but. If you shoehorn Cesaro in, you can't, because it devalues the match. Consider this. Even if even if what you don't ma- like the match, there really even if is you don't very like the match, value. if you don't like the match, it makes no sense for Cesaro to be in there right now with the losing streak he's on. So just shoehorning him in devalues any value it did have. What Here, the feud or the 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 match, the feud, whatever. Not the title. Okay. Not the title. Here's here's something else to consider. Obviously, we've established what, that there is a little bit of precedence here for, at least just for a SummerSlam match. Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent. Also, consider that WWE is also booking their ter- booking their feuds a little bit longer term. We could possibly see. Cesaro, obviously, still he's still in the mix. Yes. We could possibly see him going for the title against whoever wins this feud, which is, let's face it, it's going to likely be The Miz. Him and Ziggler are going to have a real fine match. Like, okay, I'm, Miz will come out with the belt. Oh, I'm, I'm the still The Miz is going to hold it for a couple yeah. months. 
This, yeah. No, very not. <laughs> a couple either months. Way, I didn't say very little. Yeah, either yeah. way, no matter what stretch of time they've got, that is way more than enough time to have another number one contenders match, which Cesaro can win. Those will be way more than enough time to build Cesaro back up, put him back in the spotlight, say, hey, I'm still Cesaro. I can still spin you around and uppercut you like crazy. I had a bet. I'm worthwhile. I'm going to take your title. I've proved it in the past. I can take it any time I want. I'm going to take it at, insert name of next pay-per-view here. And, that, and considering that we have not seen any concrete proof of any sort of, not, not necessarily wrongdoing, but any ill will against Cesaro right now, like, there's no nothing that says he, you know, peed in someone's Cheerios backstage. So I've got to believe he's just in the old uh, holding pattern spot yeah. right now. He's got to be. It's, a, it's one of those, he can just say, I've had a bad couple months here, okay? But I've, I'm, I'm Cesaro. I'm I'm the guy who won the Andre the Giant over the top rope battle royal at WrestleMania. I was a Paul Heyman guy, just one of the, just one of those. I can pull something out of my ass in the blink of an eye to beat you, and it doesn't take much for Cesaro to come out of this. It's just not time yet. Bingo, nailed it. I just wish right now, like, let Ziggler and Miz have their match because, like you said, it's continuing the feud of him cheating his way to get to the IC title. Have it continue for a little bit. Have that number one contender <coughs> battle royal. Bless you. Have that number one contender battle royal. Have Cesaro win. Have that be the slowly transition into his fa- a face turn where he's still, that, he's still like the brute, but he's a good guy brute. Not like that baby face type thing. I would he, ha- he has the match with The Miz. He wins it. Out comes a returning Sheamus. Have them have their ma- have them have them a feud since Sheamus has been hinting he wants the IC title to merge the belts. Have that go for a month, maybe a good month or two. And then whoever, most likely since they're wanting to build Cesaro to the top, have Cesaro win that. Out comes a returning uh, Bad News Barrett. Oh, bad. Bad News Barrett, so that can ha- have another feud, and both guys are future stars, are future champions. I would this like... would be... and I, he, Even at, continue having Sheamus in, have those three go at it, it would be a fantastic feud. I would like all of that. I just wanted to have another Battle Royal so quickly. I'd, d- I'd just do a straight up number one contenders match, Cesaro Ziggler. And then Cesaro pulls out the win, and then we go with your idea from there. <laughs> I would like that. Here's Have a, it more, here's more one, personal point instead of just, oh, this is the guy. Here's one thought that, again, maybe you'll, maybe you'll think there's something to this, maybe not. We go through a SummerSlam match. Let's assume that what we're predicting is true and The Miz wins. Mm-hmm. Next month. We do what we want to see happen where Cesaro steps in. He faces Miz at that time. Next pay-per-view, Miz wins again. Through shenanigans. shenanigans. Or, I would like that. Or, or you, even even if it doesn't. In way to keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Either to keep it going is like, okay, no one can touch me. I'm, I'm the Miz and I'm still awesome and I'm untouchable. <laughs> Roman Reigns comes out. Next pay per view, Roman Reigns keeps the strap. Boom. With Intercontinental how much they're champion. pushing Roman Reigns, you really think they'll just throw him in the Intercontinental think, title? No, but I think that's what he deserves right now. I'll Where give everyone's you that. saying oh, that's that, what he deserves. That's not that, what's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> I know. I'm not saying it, it will happen. I'm saying that would be optimal if people are still out with injuries or if there's a. Let's face it, there's a big gaping hole in the Intercontinental title scene right now. Because Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, John Cena, Randy Orton, King, they're all in the WWE title picture. All you have for the Intercontinental title picture is The Miz and Ziggler. And even with the WWE title picture, you're still missing Daniel Bryan. You're still... Who else are we still missing in the main title picture? We're down Del Rio, if you could even can't 
Well, he he could basically be considered to be in any division. We're still down Del Rio. We're still down one one guy. We're and we can't even use. We can barely use Biggie and Kofi Kingston anymore since they're still working on this not the new nation feud. I don't know what's going on with this. No one knows yet. But until they figure it out, we're not going to see the Kofi Kingston matches a week like we used to for at least for the foreseeable future. And if they want to see Rome if the WWE corporate wants to see Roman Reigns built up as a future star and we are not willing to put up with an immediate rise to the top like WWE seems to be building up to this could be the one thing that saves Roman Reigns again it probably won't happen but it would certainly help Roman Reigns and it would certainly be a thing to spice up this feud if it was the 90s I'd say that idea would probably work and they would probably do it but now that it's the 2000 it's the John Cena era where they like to push people to the moon that we don't necessarily want to go to the moon. It's not that we don't want, but you feel like they're just not ready it's to go to that soon. spot. It's too yeah. soon. I, Roman Reigns is going nowhere near the Intercontinental title. Yeah, he's staying in. He's staying in the t- the main title yeah. picture. Cesaro and the Miz is going to be a couple, a few month feud. By the end of it, if it Cesaro happens. Cesaro comes out the Intercontinental champion in a perfect world. And then we move, and then we move on with the Sheamus and the Wade Barrett from there. The one thing that really came out of this raw that I personally thought was just perfect. I'm as you can tell, I'm probably transi- I'm transitioning here. Is the John Cena versus Brock Lesnar promos? Those were well done. Say Those what were you want, very well done. Say what you want about the WWE team they they do the, they pro, do, the promo team yeah. the video team they do, they good, do promo. good stuff <laughs> they didn't need to be there they just had this video package of brock lesnar saying he's going to leave john cena in a pool of blood urine vomit he likes everybody talking, wins everybody <laughs> wins he sure likes talking about urine doesn't he i don't i don't know i just like how it's like promoting brock lesnar the guy who beat the streak who has this Long history of being a dominant beast in WWE, in UFC, the man who broke the streak. He is a unstoppable monster, but it's like, oh, John Cena did beat him once. Yeah, pre pre broken streak. I like the line that John Cena had though. I want to be the one. I want to be the one to beat, beat the, the one. one. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was an amazing. I like when John Cena is serious. Yeah, because it works. And this was John. This was the John Cena I like to see to a T. Okay, I don't like the joking about Brock Lesnar, John Cena. I I like the Brock Lesnar. I like the John Cena who's focused, who's going after someone who he doesn't think belongs, and is like, yes, he is the one in twenty one and one, but I'm gonna be the one. To, to beat, beat the one. Yeah, I like. I really. Did it was like simple, that. but that's exactly what it needed to be yeah. to be good. Now, if you did that during the Bray Wyatt feud, John Cena, you'll get more respect from us right now, because you're getting respect from us right now with this, because this you're doing right. Mm-hmm. And if only we knew who to really blame for that, John Cena or the booking team or Vince McMahon. For all we know, I don't know. All of the above, probably. Point. I've got. Here's my finger. Tell me where to point it. Up. I don't know. Oh, please. Up, <laughs> down. Which is it? I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this. Where, okay. On your nose. Where is, where is Kevin Dunn? Point, I want to point at Kevin Dunn. He's probably responsible for this. Okay. All and, right. Where's Connecticut? That way. We'll go that way. All right. <laughs> and the failing point that I don't think any of us really watched until we had to prepare for the oh. show... The contract signing between Brie Bella, or as Michael Cole called him on SmackDown, Brie Belly. <laughs> I didn't even catch Michael that. Michael Cole, what are you doing? I caught that. You, because you were waiting for Brian to get here. It's like, I think he just, he said Brie Belly. Oh my God, you. Uh, once again, my biggest complaint 
They had to close Raw with another Stephanie McMahon Brie Bella bit. Why is this the main event? Why is this the closing segment for your show? I mean, Ste- I saw from what I saw, Stephanie did do pretty decent pedigree on the Bellas, but every time you heard Brie Bella on that mic, it's uh, nails on a chalkboard. Painful. She, she's another one of those good-looking girls who can't er- act worth a crap and she's are only, only getting anywhere in this company because she's she's married to Daniel Bryan. Exactly. She's the only reason why, like, they want to keep this whole Daniel Bryan authority feud going. But since he's out, they have to do it with the terrible acting wife. Yes. Who almost ruined Daniel Bryan's title reign, like, saying, oh, he won it, now it's a flop after he won the belt. Because... Not, I, I like the idea of him having a feud with Kane, but it's the fact that Brie Bella was just making it, was just hurting it. Made it laughable. It was a yeah. joke. But nothing much else more to say other than, other Stephanie, than stop I mean, it. Stephanie, you may, like, you are awesome at what you're doing. You are a great heel, but you got to work with someone other than Brie Bella. This so. is a mid card feud. That's being pushed just because it's Stephanie McMahon. This is a mid-card feud. Treat it like it. I'll tell you what, though. There's... Put it at 9 o'clock. Didn't even deserve it. You still have have it at the top of the hour. Just put it at like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. This is perplexing to me. Like Until we see how this actually turns out and what the long-term plan for this was, I feel like future scholars of wrestling here are going to be analyzing this kind of program and just wondering what the heck happened here? What the heck led to this type of thing closing out Raws, closing out Smackdowns, being thought of so prominently on pay-per-views? Was it... It's actually making me Was it nepotism? Is it... What is it? It's making me worried. Okay, at this moment, it's making me worried that this is going to be the main event of SummerSlam. It's it actually, not. it's actually making me worried. I know, I know, this is gonna the, be the, this I know is... in my head that that it's not going to happen. But there's that thought, that two percent of my brain that's like, this could actually be the main event here's, of SummerSlam. Here's the final three <laughs> matches of SummerSlam. It's going to be Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton, Brie Bella versus Stephanie McMahon. John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. That's going to end the pay per view. That particular yeah, order. I have no. I, She's not close. If they close the pay per view, I'd be like, "What the hell is going on, WWE?" But, I have no confidence that they will yeah, do that. No, this is just silly. Silly. To Closing think that. out a Raw is bad enough. They would not. If they're just, trying to sell the WWE network as much as they're trying to, they would not sell it with that. They're trying to probably give us a third time to charm and have it close out on this. Go home I, show I, I really hope. Okay, that's that you the most that correct. they'll do. I really hope that you two are correct. I will be correct. My brain, my brain is going in weird places. Right yeah, my brain. Welcome to my world. My brain always goes <laughs> yeah. to weird places. As I go to show, weird, no doubt I go to weird places, but that's just no. That's too weird for your blood. But really, I don't think we really have anything to fear other than a few offensive Brie Bella segments. I said before. Brian, I'm sure she's a wonderful woman and a wonderful wife. She is not good TV material. No. Honestly, if it wasn't for things like the NXT women's division, I would have nothing to watch. Neither, neither of them are. Nikki's no better. All right. Well, Nikki is... Nikki's in the... Put- Nick- Nikki's got reasons where she's at. <laughs> I'll say that. Yes, she's dating John Cena. And, uh... That's it. Dating John Cena. And her act. We'll just leave. Uh, it. Yeah, uh, maybe, you ruined maybe, it. Maybe no, I ruined we'll just, it. We'll just, we'll just, I ruined no. it. It's you, that okay, time. here, ha, here, have, have my title belt of King Perv of the show. There you go. <laughs> You're the champion now. You know what? You're the one who's talking about. Just, you know what? I'm I not talking about idea. nothing. You know, I got an idea. Fool, you like to have. You usually do your network match of the of the week, right? Uh, I'm have, going to be starting that very very soon. You did that last week, so... I did? I'm, yeah. Oh, yes, I did. You I did didn't do it post anything week. on the Facebook wall, yes. Now, I got one for the WWE Universe, the Scholars of Wrestling Universe, ha, 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 to watch. Go to Our the audience. WWE Network. If you want to see a real good Stephanie McMahon feud, 
Look up Stephanie McMahon versus Lita. She had a feud with Lita. Yeah, what was that? She, she right. went uh, the deep, look up the women's title match: Stephanie McMahon versus Lita on Raw. This was when uh, Triple H was going after the Hardys for the Intercontinental Title, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, 2001. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I almost totally forgot about this. Yeah. See, this is why you guys are scholars. Yeah, look up Steph- Lita versus Stephanie McMahon Raw, or Women's Championship. I don't know how. I have the network, and I still don't no, know how No, that's how you pull off a Stephanie McMahon feed. <laughs> exactly. Not not the- Did they have some sort of blow-off uh, on pay-per-view? I don't think so. I don't think. No. I don't, not that I recall. Okay, that's. I can imagine that being a little bit difficult to track down, but... Now I kind of want to see this. It's now. called the YouTubes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think we've had enough for tonight. We, we're all on brain fried mode right now. Just we're without. All, we're all fried Actually, you know what? Before now. we go, facial hair ratings for this raw. What would you guys give it? Overall, the only real saving grace is obviously the, the Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins segment. Uh, it, it was a raw. It sure was a raw. But even even with that, I can't give it beyond a standard goatee two out of five. Ryan, he's thinking long about this one. Look at this. You're two out of five is my... a peach fuzz, by the way, not a standard. Okay, goatee. whatever. <laughs> you gave it a two. Hold on. Yeah, I gave it a two out of five. Oh, two. Okay. I'll keep it short and sweet. The only offensive thing to me was the uh, main event segment. Um, everything else was. Good. Nothing. Nothing great. Nothing horrible, other than that one segment. So, I will go the three out of five. Classic. Classic OT. Okay. Now with me, I there were a lot more negatives than positives that came out of this. One, po- the positives was the John Cena Brock Lesnar promos, which I loved. I would watch those over and over again. The Seth Rollins Dean Ambrose beat the clock challenge because. It's something we've never seen on a Beat the Clock Challenge before. Because normally with Beat the Clock Challenges, I I really don't recall the last time the person who was involved with the challenge lost. Or someone had a match that's beyond 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. I've ne- I, I don't even recall the last time I've seen that. So it was different and intriguing. It got me going. I was entertained with the whole he Slater bit. Um, I like Triple H trolling the crowd it was it was hilarious just how much he can change he can control nine, the crowd nine, nine, 99. <laughs> now negatives Whoa. negatives was the jericho versus luke harper i actually would like to have seen that be an actual match it was only just like i don't even think it lasted a whole segment uh ziggler <laughs> squashing cesaro i just wasn't a big fan of that as much as i liked the last man standing match I didn't like the way it ended where Kane was struggling to get up. I was expecting Roman Reigns to take down the big red machine that, uh, Kane with something bigger than just a regular Superman punch and a spear. Uh, Rusev beating Swagger with a flag. It was just nothing new. And the the icing, the final piece on that cake, the Stephanie McMahon, Brie Bella, I actually turned it off. As soon as the Seth Rollins-Dean Ambrose match ended... I told I told my wife, okay, you can watch whatever you want now because I'm not interested anymore. That's how much this feud is intriguing me. Not at all. <sighs> I'm very borderline between peach fuzz and clean shaven on this raw because I got there was at some points I was actually getting pretty angry with how much everything was being booked. Really, it, with the again with the exception of that one part. If you legitimately gave this a peach, not a peach fuzz, a clean shave, a clean shave, one out of five, I would not be surprised in the slightest. We've gotten some really good raws in the past. And this was not up to that. This was this there's wasn't a even lot. Edit. There's a lot that wasn't that wasn't there to like that, with the exception of the few bright spots and the crowd. There really wasn't much to this. And the final nail on the head is Damian Sandow losing to a returning Mark Henry. <laughs> I just had to throw yeah, that in there. It's a spot. I, I gonna, I, that even it's gonna. It's Mark even Henry. You're gonna anymore. lose. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna lose. Here's what I'm gonna too. do. I'm not like, I'm gonna do in between and just give it a five o'clock shadow. 
<laughs> in between Peach Buzz uh, and Classic okay. Anyone else <laughs> think, well, I think we need to go back to Drawing Board and retool this rating system because we're going in a lot into the halves at this point. Okay. Five o'clock. I'm just going to go. Best I could do. I'm, I'm just going to give it a uh, Peach Fuzz. It, to keep it on the normal rating system, I'm just going to give it a Peach Fuzz. It's, no, this, this Raw was a Soul Patch. Soul Patch? Yeah, Soul Patch. Just... No star we'll ranks associated. You know what? We'll call the clean shave and a zero. Soul patch is one. So, okay. You're here for history is made. We history is made in scholars of wrestling. Yeah. We changed our facial hair rating system. There you go. All right. Now we want to know you, the scholars of wrestling universe. What did you all think of this past Raw? What do you think of Alberto Del Rio getting released? What do you think about Hulk Hogan's birthday next week? Are you excited about it as we are? Well, how much in depth we got into that conversation? <laughs> That was more ridiculous fantasy booking than the well, we, power of you. The power, the power of, of you. you. Uh, if you like what you heard here, you can like this video. You can subscribe to our channel. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. Thank you all for listening in. We love you all. We are the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Good night, everybody. I need pizza. I need to go to sleep. This is just... Pumpy needs it now. This is our great...